Um, hey guys, uh, Faisal Tahir here. Um, I wanted to talk about linear workflow in Maya. Uh, the thing was, I've been getting a lot of questions on how to do this in the newer versions um, or in the older versions. Uh, the problem is, there was nothing uh, uh, solid, uh, you know, solidly explained about how it, it's going to work. Um, and basically, a lot of people don't really know what linear workflow is. Uh, I think that's one of the most important things if you're doing any any kind of lighting at all. Uh, this is something that everyone should know and uh, learn before uh, even getting into it. So one of the fir first places I would uh, want to guide you to would be uh, here, uh, Linear Workflow. Um, this is by uh, Master Zap. Uh, if you know uh, Master Zap, if you've been a mental ray user, you're going to definitely know who Master Zap is. Um, currently, he's working for uh, Autodesk now. He used to work with metal images. Um, I'm not going to go over uh, talking about what linear workflow is, the theory part. I would want you to go read about it first. Um, basically, when you're doing any kind of lighting, you're lighting in linear space. That is, you're lighting in 32-bit uh, floating point uh, space. So the images that you're rendering are floating point and uh, your monitors that you use, the display uh, uh, devices that we use, they have a gamma curve, uh, a gamma of 2.2 on them. So you are basically not really seeing uh, what you're rendering. So you are working in a higher dynamic range and uh, your monitors have a gamma of 2.2 so you don't really get to see uh, all of that dynamic range. So you end up applying a sRGB uh, gamma curve on those images and you see the images on the monitor properly so that's the whole thing now there are a couple of ways to set it up in uh, Maya uh, at least in the newer versions that is the 2012 version that I'm using here uh, they have streamlined uh, the whole process to some extent so I'm gonna go over that first and uh, let me go back there and I want you guys to go through this first before you go through the rest of uh, the uh, uh, stuff that I'm going to talk about right now. So this is one of the first places you should check out. You can pause the video and uh, go to that link or just do a Google search for linear workflow and uh, you're definitely going to stumble on this uh, uh, link here. The other place would be this one the djx.com.au uh, this blog um, uh, he has tried to explain it uh, in a very neat way uh, I kind of liked it uh, but it's gonna change uh, the way I'm gonna be doing it is a little bit different from what is being explained here um, another nice place to read about it uh, if you're using an older version of Maya at least if you're using uh, 2009 or so would be uh, Ed's uh, website if you know who Ed Whetstone is he's a lighter uh, if you go on to his website uh, whetstonevfx.com on his blog that is you will find uh, a method of doing this uh, read through uh, it's a fun read and uh, you will understand uh, how this is all working now I have made this video for people who already know a little bit about linear workflow so but they're still kind of confused and uh, they don't really know what they're doing so I'm gonna go and uh, kind of straighten out uh, some of those things you know that people are confused about so this is going to be kind of this direct uh, thing that you've been looking for so uh, just bear with me and uh, I'm gonna try and explain all of the things that are needed uh, to set up a proper linear workflow in Maya okay and uh, I know there are a lot of people who are lighting and they don't really know uh, what this is so this is totally directed at those people so let's get started
so <clears throat> the first thing that you should do if you're doing any kind of uh, linear workflow if you're doing any kind of lighting in Maya would be to come in here into your render settings and uh, definitely use metal ray uh, not the crappy Maya software uh, renderer um, for those of you who use uh, V-Ray or who want to uh, move over to V-Ray I'm going to do a separate video on that uh, maybe sometime in the future uh, I'm going to set it uh, off to metal ray and uh, I'll go by I think I should go tab wise so in the common uh, what you should do is uh, this section right here talks about doing the color management so what is this all about basically when you check this when you enable the color management uh, uh, checkbox here the default input profile would be the images that are coming in so this means your textures uh, your uh, displacement maps or all of those images now we don't need to apply a gamma curve on bump maps and displacement maps uh, they do not re uh, need a gamma curve because we are not dealing with color uh, uh, we are not be showing any color with those maps so I'll show you another way to deal with that but just check this uh, I think this is an easier way there's another way I'm gonna show that right uh, after this but if you want to follow what I am doing um, this is the best way to do it I I think so check this set your uh, default input uh, profile to sRGB so all of those images that are coming uh, we are saying that the gamma that we have on it the gamma of 2.2 we want to apply the curve on that so basically again if you were to I'm just gonna pull out uh, the calculator here uh, we have a gamma of 2.2 so what we need to do is we need to divide that by 1 so we are going to get let me do that again to uh, I'm sorry I'm gonna do it the other way I'm really bad at math 1 divided by 2.2 sorry you're gonna get uh, this so you have to apply a gamma of 0.454545 on those images in order to remove the existing gamma so that you can add the gamma later on uh, in post when we are doing our compositing we can add the gamma then leave the images uh, to be rendered as linear and add the gamma curve later on so that's the whole idea that's how people work so I'm gonna get rid of that under uh, default output profile you can see that I'm leaving the images as linear sRGB that means I'm not going to apply the gamma curve uh, when I render the images so leave this at linear sRGB and most importantly when you're doing a linear uh, workflow uh, when you're using a linear workflow you want to render in an image format which supports 32-bit floating point images so OpenEXR the best way to go so if uh, you have this set to anything else normally it's set to my IFF switch it to the OpenEXR um, and that's it um, I don't apply any compression so leave that alone uh, the other thing that I like to do is uh, when you switch it to open EXR you're gonna get a little error saying that the current image format will not support um, uh, the higher uh, bit depth so you need to go into quality and go down to frame buffer and switch your data type to a RGBA floating point uh, this will be set to uh, uh, I believe it is uh, RGBA 8-bit you want to switch it to RGB A4 uh, by 32 32 bit that's what I have set here so that's pretty much it that's that's all that you need to do and I like to save that I can actually save settings as as a preset and I put a preset here so every time I start up Maya I just need to load that preset you can see I have set this to linear so I know that I'm working you know in linear works uh, 
uh, I'm using a linear workflow. So trust me, this is going to ease off all of your problems that you've been facing all this time. You can count on that. That's because, um, say, I've got a couple of lights here. So if I were to go and uh, zoom out, you can see I've, I've got a couple of lights here. If I select <coughs> one of these lights and go into its attributes, you can see I'm using a quadratic decay. Now, this is something that you should always use some type of decay on your lights because the real world lights fall off normally the CG lights don't fall off and I don't want to go into that right now but all of this works properly before if you don't set up the linear workflow and you start using decay you're gonna have these uh, blown out areas uh, wherever the light is closer so y you know no matter how much you tweak um, you are always going to have that so if you set up linear workflow it works like a charm uh, you can see that here there is an example here this is uh, without uh, linear workflow and you can see the fall off uh, though it's it's very close to real world you can see this blown out areas and check this out this is with uh, linear workflow and you're not going to have those burnt out areas uh, if you're using linear workflow things look better so uh, use linear workflow there now coming to the frame buffer so I'm I'm just gonna pull out my frame buffer here and you can see I've got a nice little render of uh, Mr. Tim's uh, if you watch Rango you would have seen him on in that movie uh, I'm just gonna go into display and uh, make sure you change this to 32 bit floating point HDR now when you do this for the first time you would have to restart Maya so just restart Maya once and it will be set to 32 bit floating point normally this is set at 8 bit <laughs> integer so switch it to 32 bit you can go into color management and this is basically where you're managing the the viewer the frame buffer excuse me so what you need to do here is you need to make sure that the image color profile is set to the linear sRGB I'm doing exactly what I did here uh, in the render settings um, let me just get uh, rid of that and uh, we can just make a comparison here check this out if I set this uh, to image color profile to linear I'm telling it the same thing that you know deal the deal with the output image profile as a linear because this is what I'm outputting so the actual image is going to be still linear but when you're displaying it to me that's what it says here display color profile on the monitor you apply a gamma curve so I'm gonna basically have that gamma curve applied when I'm viewing the images but when I'm saving them out as those open EXR floating point images they are not gonna contain the gamma curve so they're going to be still uh, linear and I also like to put uh, an image uh, name here so let me just say Tim's one okay and then the real cool thing is you can actually let me just make this smaller uh, go here and change the exposure of your image and you can see it, it contains all of that dynamic range that I was talking about so this is kind of neat I really like this what they have done here is just very nice I don't have to jump to nuke or any other uh, packages to uh, you know check the exposure it's right here so it's kind of nice but I always like to load my images into nuke and have a look at them there um, I'll go through that in a minute um, now there is a little bit of a catch here uh, I was telling you that this is a nice way to go yes it is but uh, in some cases like I said displacement maps or bum maps uh, you don't want to apply a sRGB uh, profile on them so how do you deal with that uh, well if I bring up the hypershade here I like to have that checked okay and uh, the glorious hypershade. Um, if I were to um, 
let's say bring in an image so I'm just going to go into the uh, Maya 2d textures and just create a simple file node here and bring in uh, an image uh, if I just choose uh, I've got a I've got an image here uh, just a random image I was using that as a reference uh, so check this out you've got a color profile and you're using the default uh, input profile what is the default input profile um, it's the sRGB input profile so you're applying a gamma correction here now before if you were to use this I'm just going to create a, a material here so I always use uh, the Mia materials and if I were to just connect this this is going to work fine now that's because I have set it off to use the default input profile if you were using an older version of Maya what you had to do is you had to first connect uh, a color utility which is the gamma correct utility here you can also find that I can never find those things here but let me just go and set it to utilities color utilities and I'm not a big fan of this gamma correct utility uh, and what you were supposed to do is the same thing connect this into the value and uh, take the gamma here and set it to 0 0.454 0 0.454 and 0.454 and then you connect this into the color and you can see it looks a little darker but that's all right when we render this it's gonna come out exactly like the way it looks here now when you're using linear workflow uh, and uh, when you have that checked over here you don't need to do this at least not for these images uh, what if this was a bump map mm, that's a good question uh, if this was a bump map what you would want to do is just come here and set the color profile to linear you leave that uh, as linear you don't need to apply a sRGB curve uh, leave it as a linear uh, and that will take care of uh, whatever uh, needs to be done now having said that I'm kind of in the dark here um, that's what that's the only thing that is still kind of confusing because you don't want to apply a sRGB curve uh, to those images uh, this is where uh, the whole uh, thing kind of breaks so if you uncheck that and uh, if you want to treat this image uh, you know with a gamma you would want to mm, you know just uncheck that and uh, leave everything you know it's gonna anyway render it that as a linear sRGB so you don't need to worry about the output profile so the only thing you need to worry about is the input profile so I would have to come here and create one of those uh, gamma nodes again and uh, make sure you know I connect it the right way uh, with the gamma of 0 0.45 uh, 454 and 454 for RG and B um, and uh, leave the bump maps alone don't gamify them don't uh, put a gamma on it both are legitimate ways of doing this okay so okay what is the other thing uh, I wanted to talk about uh, yeah the shader here the color here if you were using a shader as is that is uh, let me just get rid of that if you had chosen a color it would never show up here now uh, you're gonna choose some color and it's going to show you some other color here that's because of the whole gamma thing it does not apply sadly this srgb thing does not apply to the shader swatches um, I hope they fix this I don't want to apply a gamma correct uh, every time I want to use uh, you know 
just a simple single diffuse color um, it's a it's it's a bit of a pain if you know what I mean um, so what I need to do is every time I would have to go here and if I want to use a single color I would have to come here use a ramp um, utility so again uh, I can never find those things uh, over there so create 2d I can actually do it this time uh, 2d file grab these and if that's the uh, did I take a file note sorry take a ramp oh yeah it's 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 midnight so I'm kinda tired okay here we go uh, get rid of the other colors just keep one color and uh, if that's the color I want I choose whatever color I need and I apply a gamma curve which is the 0 0.454 454 connect that to the value so let's just make a copy of that and now let me go back uh, to the shader here and just bring down the the ramp 3 is what I made so so you would have to go and create that uh, gamma card. I don't want to create it. I already have it here. So here's the one that I just pasted. 0.454545. So take this, uh, connect it in the value. Looks like it's already connected. Uh, and connect this into the color. And you're going to get the exact color that you've chosen when you render it. So that's the way we fix it. So right now that's the only solution that I have found. Um, like I said, the only thing uh, that I am kind of in the dark, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, the whole uh, you know bump maps and uh, displacement maps thing. Uh, I don't really need to worry about it. That's what I've been told. Once you check this, everything is gonna be fine. I don't believe these people. So. I'm gonna still look into that uh, but this is how you do it right now so let me just take a render of this and then um, show you how this is gonna look like so let's just take a render this is gonna take uh, a minute I guess so you gotta have to watch me render this so just bear with me I'll show you a neat little thing here um, the reason I'm rendering is I wanted to save this as a EXR image the one that I have previously rendered is actually a TGA so uh, show you one l last little tip uh, when you're doing your test renders and you are rendering in EXR um, the way you save them when you're rendering in your frame buffer is uh, quite simple actually so once the render is done so it's almost done yes it's done so if you want to save this and have a look at this uh, in nuke just hit this keep image button and because I had already set uh, that as a EXR the last one uh, in this case it's this one because I renamed it is this one the temps you will find always find this in the images the temp uh, directory so I'm just gonna drag this into uh, nuke here and you can see I already have a, a couple of these loaded uh, and when I view these so if I press select this and press 1 to look at this from the viewer notice that the default color space here is already set to linear so that's because this is a floating point image and you can see that here if I were to take this down you can see the dynamic range uh, actually the best way to show it is to just keep this here and you can see the values are going um, higher than one in some places mm, you can see that there not too much 
because I don't have any uh, blown out over bright areas and right so you can see I've got some high dynamic range there so um, what I was doing was I was kind of grading it applying a little bit of a color correction there so I'm just gonna copy those over here so this was the original color but I ended up with something like that I graded it a little bit applied some color correction and there we go so working uh, like this uh, trust me is gonna make your uh, life easier um, linearly uh, linear workflow is the best way to go if you're doing any kind of lighting uh, so I hope this was useful and uh, I'm sure uh, you're gonna use this uh, once you uh, get into uh, uh, doing any kind of serious lighting you should really know what you're doing so I wish you the best of luck with the whole linear thing do read uh, this stuff first before you get into that um, there is a neat little link here uh, let me just point it uh, Rob uh, Nader host uh, has got uh, 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 he's got some uh, nice information about uh, linear workflow uh, here uh, he talks it, it's a little more technical uh, stuff uh, but you will definitely be able to understand the whole deal with the you know the, the gamma curve that we end up applying over the images so do read this uh, good st stuff here uh, and uh, that's pretty much it uh, let's just uh, wrap here thank you uh, excuse me thank you very much for uh, listening see you in the next one